Welcome to Dweller of the Dark. We are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors. We will be digging up several obscure, strange, and forgotten authors who influenced many of the great horror, science fiction, and fantasy writers today. Comment below if you like. If you have authors that you'd like to see recognized, list them in the comments or contact our author page. Subscribe for more tales of the horrifying, obscure, strange, and forgotten. We'll have quite a collection. Climbing out of the tombs. Like any of our tales, hit the like button below. You can find us on Facebook at Jeffrey LeBlanc Horror Writer. Official website, JeffreyLeBlanc.com. On Amazon and Twitter at Jeffrey J. LeBlanc. There are writers that write horror stories. Then there are those who write to horrify, to unnerve, and to terrify you. On occasion, we might, if the moon is full, tickle the funny bone, give a skull a grin. But we always want to leave a lasting, spine-tingling chill and foreboding of all things in the dark. We are moving in that direction, armed with the skulls and bones of the greats, such as M.R. James, William Blake, H.P. Lovecraft, Robert Block, Clark, Ashton Smith, August Derleth, and Anne Rice, to name a few. The fog-filled swamp, the lonely church, the mysterious room, and the quiet crypt are our playground for all manner of the supernatural. But do not be fooled that we threw together tired, anthropocentric prose or worn cliches. It's sure folly to think we went for that easy jump scare. No. Our stories are winding, spidery staircases of the terrifying. They are clawed, speculative, horror labyrinths of mocking, Poe, and Lovecraftian design, with a menace that stays with you long after you've finished reading our works. In 2010, seasick in 60 foot seas during a rough sail on a seismic ship across the frigid North Sea headed into the Atlantic. Jeffrey LeBlanc wrote the short story The Devil of Black Bayou. The story was to entertain the crew in 40 foot swells and 60 foot seas to take their minds off of a rough trip. The very early draft was placed on Harper Collins' autonomy. And he watched it take off to the top 10 in the horror listing, top 15 out of over 10,000 writers. This version is the brief comedic horror short story that has evolved to become a novel for Cloven Hoof. This is the first novel of Jeffrey LeBlanc and for the Avalon Mythos. Some excerpts of the story were included in the 2015 collection, Wolves, Wings, and Other Things, published again by Cloven Hoof. We've made many fans with this one. Truly encourage you to check out the origin story and vast novel, The Devil of Black Bayou. Our novel there tells the life, death, and undeath of a pirate from the era of Jean Lafitte. And that one, Anton Valter, accepts a cursed deal to save and see the love of his life for eternity. But deals with the devil, as you know, never go the way you planned. So tonight, imagine being on a cold, windswept 60-foot sea. The seismic ship you're on creaks and twists of broken bones while rhythmically swaying and nodding in the tumultuous ocean. You find out alarmingly from the first mate that the captain has decided to sail the exact route as Titanic. However, you make your trip back to the United States. Shadowed in a large crew room of the vessel, the semi-lit marine lamps and boisterous sailors Begin the tale of a cursed monster trying to get some immortal rest. The room of sailors went quiet, and then there was the occasional laugh. 
Our tale will be a little lighter for the immortal pirate. He's trying to recover after his demoniacal island has been destroyed. Unfortunately, he's being bothered by a young man while trying to rest in his tomb. Who is the devil of Black Bayou? Why is the trespassing man disturbing the cursed monster slumbering in his crypt? Will anyone survive a confrontation with the devil of Black Bayou? The Devil of Black Bayou by Jeffrey LeBlanc. Poem. Memoir of a Lonely Ghost Near a Cemetery Road by Arthur. The wind howls and twists ancient trees. They creak and bend like an old man's knees. The moon above bathes the cemetery in an array of luminescent bliss. The ghosts of lovers lost and long dead return, searching for the last kiss. The worm inches beneath hollowed black ground, along with the maggot, the rat, and the beetle. They squirm and scurry through my ragged flesh, never to be found. I'm neither here, I'm neither there. I'm neither ethereal mist, nor natural cold air. My cursed soul has not ascended to the Pearl Palace of Heaven. My cursed soul has not trekked and been tortured through the winding levels of Dante's Inferno, the gates of hell. My cursed soul stands in the purgatory of repetition with each ring of a lonely church bell find solace and comfort in the mysteries of the ocean wave. I find solace and comfort in the flowing ghostly waves of Spanish moss and the moan of lumbering oaks. Finally, I come to fruition at dawn's first light. This is my nightly penance end. I'm shrouded in death's veil. And these decayed walls Entombed within. One. Caitlin. I know he's in there. All we do is climb over and get to the spot, and we get five levels. Talapoche is speaking to his petite and frightened girlfriend. He has moved, haphazardly struggling to climb over the high, decayed wall surrounding St. Louis Cemetery. The location, known officially as St. Louis Cemetery No. 3, was the most visited historical and haunted history spot in New Orleans. But Tyler was not here for a haunted history or any educational tour. The cemetery was now ground zero for Pokemon Go. Now amongst the voodoo queen graves, ghosts, possible vampires, was the latest virtual spot for the recent game app phenomenon. An application that identified virtual monsters and rewarded players with strength and increased player levels on a cell phone. The object of the game was for enthusiasts like Tyler to secure make-believe monsters only they could see on their devices. The application he purchased weeks ago compelled him addictively to move all over real geographical locations find the data spots that showed as strength level points or rewards once identified. Tyler's obsession above all others Pokemon Go was to capture the celebrated super strength character while Trexel measles. He was newly created for the game, an orange, pink, and blue pigmented monstrosity with highly colored had been elusive to detect anywhere. Pieced together from antelope, turtle, and porcupine shapes and appendages, it had a long neck, 12 legs, a turtle shell covered in crystal blue spines, great burst of speed and defenses. Baltrex Onizel was the quintessential strength character guaranteed to move any player up five levels easily. All information and speculation on his location and strategy to capture Baltrex came from gossip. 
gaming Bibles and tech magazines. All that Tyler Poche, the former pizza delivery guy, electrician, river rat, and jack of all trades knew was he had to capture Bal Trexo at all costs. Convincing or rather dragging his girlfriend along, Caitlin Dupre, was just line yap. Now after two weeks of exhaustive day and night searches, borrowing money from Caitlin and having to drive him all over, Tyler had gotten a tip from an unlikely source. A hobbled, ugly, half-blind black man. It was his guitar playing that caught the young couple's notice. Caitlin caught a fire to her musical ears after hearing halfway across the park a crazy guitar rip of Robert Johnson's Crossroad. Immediately, curious, Caitlin had to know the source of such wicked playing. As she approached with Tyler in tow, she took note of the deformed blind man with astonishment. The black jazz man had a hand-rolled cigarette half hanging in from his mouth. His eyes were large and white as cue balls. Covered in fevered perspiration on his brow, neck, and cordwood of forms, he stretched and owned the guitar. The blues man had calloused skeletal fingers while strumming the red and silver guitar like lightning. Complete with a spark or two, he was definitely a curiosity. This blues man had a small age cardboard sign by his highly polished black patent shoes tapping in rhythm. The sign was simply but noteworthy. I play for souls, <laughs> not money. He was amongst a few spread out musicians turning chords into gold in the famed Louis Armstrong Park. The musician wrapped up the song sending an arc of spark on his guitar strings at the end of Crossroads. He brought applause and whistles from the little crowd on that last beat. I'm Robert Johnson. Damn glad to entertain ya. Old man bellowed to the crowd. Then with a razor's edge smile, showing pearl teeth with almost pointed incisors and one of which was covered in gold, he said, Y'all can pay me now or <laughs> later. On that note, the kids placed some money in the guitar box, at which Robert whispered to Tyler, Baltrexo Neasles in the cemetery, sir. St. Louis Cemetery number three, my friend. You get out there if you want that Pokemon power, my friend. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. And the devil take my soul, sir, was the old man's bellowed promise. Tyler, what'd he say? What's he mean by that? Kaylin is perplexed by the old man's whisper to her boyfriend. The man acted as if he and Tyler had been friends forever. It was a little unnerving for the by your girl to see. He told me where to find Baltrexel Neasles. Awesome, huh? Tyler's so obsessed on the Pokemon Go search, he misses the obvious. Tyler, how did the blind man even know you were looking for it? He's blind. Something's wrong with him, and his guitar playing with Wild Great was strange and out of place. It's a rational argument by Caitlin and Tyler. I don't know, Caitlin. Don't handicap people. Like, get superpowers or senses? When they lose a limb or eye? Maybe he's got super duper hearing and heard us talking. That was making about as much sense as a fool. Caitlin pushes her brown hair out of her face, skeptically looking at her stubborn boyfriend at the side, saying, You heard us talk half a mile across the park? It makes no sense. Where are we going? Tyler, without a pause, St. Louis Cemetery, number three. Baltrexel Measles is by, by Nicholas Cage's Pyramid Tomb. A cemetery in New Orleans in the ghetto at night. Are you crazy? There's no way I can go in there, Ty Ty. No freaking way. Kalen's normal, wide, expressive brown eyes growl, owl like, and there is a tremble on her brow. She hates arguments and confrontation, but Tyler is going too far here. Fine, you stay outside the cemetery. I'll get the super level. I'm going to get him and I'm not going back. Stubbornly determined now. There's no reasoning with the fool. Caitlin's mind. Some people have to learn the hard way. Company with his girlfriend, Caitlin Duper, he had racked up big time. 
Over at the Mall of Clearview near Metairie, he found a, a coffin. At St. Louis Armstrong Park, they chased down Electra Buzz and even a Pidgey. But the real excitement came when, unbelievably, he and Caitlin captured a drowsy. Knight scored what he was thought a gamer myth, Zapdos, by an abandoned yacht slip on Lake Pontchartrain. Ah, damn glass. Tyler moved slowly with his hand on his right knee. On his ascent over the cemetery wall, he had banged his right knee on broken glass. The glass. A security determined embedded in the top portion of the high walls of the cemetery left a nasty gash on Tyler's soft skin, hairless, pale knee. The glass embedded walls have been protecting the 500 year old tombstones and crypts for years. Owie! Stupid glass won't stop me from getting you, Baltrexo. Now, ow! It won't. Tyler sits down on top of an aged, skull white crypt. He makes a half assed attempt to pull out the shard of glass. Right now, he wishes his mommy was here to pull out the ouchie and give him medicine and band aid. Looking at his phone and talking more to himself, you will not get away. Tyler, you okay? I heard you yell. Why did you say a bad word? Caitlin stands outside the cemetery at the wall's base. She is, is looked up with the doe-like brown eyes onto her idiot boyfriend. They had fought over an hour now and about coming to New Orleans, then to St. Louis, Louis Armstrong Park, and now an absolute Tyler insanity, the New Orleans ghetto area after dark. It was one thing to walk through a sparse mall in New Orleans to find Pokemon Go strength points. But now it was a totally different situation. Hiking through a cemetery, a dark and abandoned haunted cemetery at night in the ghetto. Let's just go, Tyler. If you are scared, go back to the car. Be a little kidding, just go. I can find Baltrexo, Mew, and Mito by myself. It's not like you wanted to go to New Orleans anyway. Tyler's nasal, whiny voice is the only sound being heard other than the buzz of nearby mosquitoes. Fine, puddle. Cut you, yourself on broken, probably diseased glass over this stupid game. You're stubborn and selfish like Mama says all the time. And by the way, the entire family is still mad at you for selling out Papa on the shrimp boat. They'll be furious if they find out you have me out in here in this dump. She brushes back her brown hair with her little fingers, huffs under her breath, and turns to head to the car. Why did you call me a bu bu butt? Uh, well, you know what you said. Tyler's perplexed. And she's actually leaving when they are so close to Baltrex and Nezels. He taunts her as he heads to the car. Fine. I'll find it and you'll be jealous. In a final desperate plea, she tries to guilt the moron. Maybe she can reach out to some part of Tyler's heart. I'm going to the car. I told you it's a school night, Tyler. I have college in the morning. I'm already on probation and doing extra credit because of this game. If you love me, you won't you get out of that place now and get me home. Caitlin normal the pacifist avoid border of all things starting drama and conflict has had more than enough of her boyfriend. All she can think as she walks alone in the on the gar dark garbage covered streets is rage. She thinks now, more than ever, that Tyler's nickname, Princess, aptly fits him. Caitlin, however, feels ashamed to have sunk to his level and curse, and curse at him. But then her anger reignites when she thinks of her struggling grades in school. Her academic struggle all based on Tyler, Princess Poche's selfishness and obsession with the Pokemon Go game. Two. A desiccated, dry corpse, lifeless, Anton Valter. Rest inside the brick crypt. Tyler stands on to climb over into the cemetery. In the quiet, cobweb darkness, his withered corpse seemed at peace. The shriveled appearance, just like the body itself, was an illusion of death. Anton, in hibernation, waited. He slept death's nocturna, but he was not dead. Immortal. Entombed within, Anton Valtier healed aged wounds from a horrendous battle suffered 
before. On his vampire monster sanctuary of Avalon. It was the smells oozing from the cut that woke the vampire. It was the same jagged laceration points, streams of sinnet, rose red, auburn, indigo blood that drove the razor vampire teeth to clicking alive. Tyler, unaware, distracted by the Pokemon Go, was easy prey for those same teeth. It was the taste of a single micro drop of blood splattering down into the crevices, then on the mouth of Anton that churned on the creature's frenzy to destroy and eat. It was, finally, the dragon noise of glass on the crypt roof and falling debris from Tyler's knee that allowed the vampire to wake and echolocate its prey. Tyler's right leg was covered in blood. It started the moment he tried to unsuccessfully pull the large shard of green glass out of the leg. He pulled the glass out on the third try. Of course, you know what around but the brown and black bats flying overhead. White moths weaving out of the corner street lights and ebony roaches scurrying on the ground. Tyler felt comfortable and without shame to cry just a little bit. After squinting and not looking, he managed to dislodge the glass from the flesh. The sound was similar to sucking jello through a straw in Tyler's mind. The cut, when he, he weakly looked, was a few inches in length and probably deep. Tyler couldn't and didn't want to know. It was dark. He had no light other than the cell phone and he couldn't stand blood. Caitlin, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you and bring Casper to get a treat and groomed. And that was when the realization of what he'd done hit Tyler squarely in the hard head. Caitlin had left him alone. But was it his fault? He felt it was not. How could it be his fault? Why did she leave? She had quit on the game, and that was not cool. All they had left to do was find Baltrex and Measles, and they'd be on the next level. In the growing long shadows of the crypts and tombs, the cemetery took on an otherworldly appearance. Twisted dead flowers were reaching skeletal hands. Rusted twisted crosses were grim reapers in robe and sith. A feral cat shadow tiptoeing on a hunt, elongated to wraiths hovering over Tyler's head. Tyler heard the scratchy, rasp, and scurry of insects. Or was it other animals like opossums? Or the giant stalking city rats? Total darkness as he slid down to get to ground level to walk toward the location of Baltrexo. Tyler imagined real horrors. He was in a world of real monsters now. Worse now he was hurt. Caitlin! Caitlin, come back! The crypt behind him shook. That's a little weird, Tyler thought. Had to be the wind playing tricks. He must have moved something inside when he climbed over the fence. You can see a dark purple and burgundy thin line of blood behind where he just passed with the cell phone. Blood ooze, still oozed from his cut. Okay, we get the bow checks up by Nicholas Cage's pyramid tombstone and get out of here. second shift of noise from the decrepit crypt brought small clouds of dust, bone fragments, and mold through the walls of the tombs, cracks, and crevices. The movement with the noise made Tyler jump and squirt on himself. Oh, man! Tyler looks down at the growing dark stain in the small crotch of his pants in disgust. On the bright side, at least he hadn't crapped himself yet. Wet, bloody, and dirty, he moved hurriedly to the north side of the cemetery, tripping over loose bricks and old flower vases. He was looking for any chance of opening out without having to climb back across that glass across the top of the cemetery fence. He didn't need any more injuries or any more trouble now. Scooby-Doo, this place is too spooky for you. Tyler whispered a little rhyme to ease the tension. As he hobbled, he couldn't help the growing agitation and patience as darkness and quiet grew. Tyler Poche could not wait to get out of the creepy place. His hobble pace increasing slightly to a brisk walk, then a staggered run. Princess's thoughts were on not being seen once he was outside the cemetery. He was more worried the crypt would fall and make him further noise and alert a cop or someone. 
He didn't want to be around to get in trouble or arrested, but but he turned to look at his phone app. He saw the 30 foot high by 30 foot wide pyramid shaped tombstone in the middle southern third of St. Louis Cemetery. St. Pyramid Gravestone owned by Nicolas Cage. Baltrexo Measles, Tyler exclaimed, triumphantly forgetting his fear briefly. He couldn't leave here without him. Ty Ty had bled for this one, damn it. And if Caitlin wasn't here now to share the points, oh well. So, in his limited vision, he thought, if he cut to the right, then to the western side of the cemetery, and skated along the furthest wall, he could straight shoot to the middle area in a few minutes. There he knew the Pokemon Go avatar would show itself. Tyler knew he'd better hurry. Kaboom! The rest of the crip he had damaged had just collapsed. It was echoing noise and pushing waves of great human dust. Remains everywhere. He'd be lucky for sure to not catch something and just die. Tyler moves, his leg aching to the furthest part of the wall. Something is there in the shadows. Ah! Tyler screams out. The shape has startled him. Tyler drops to all fours to not be seen, while down there in the gravel decayed bone dust and earth. He picks up hastily and throws a brick at the shadow creature. Then in the same motion gets up and runs down a side area of crypts. The moves are far from graceful and athletic. However, the brick connects with the fearsome shadow beast, an eroded and broken winged statue of St. Michael. Tyler hears the crack of brick in, with concrete on the broken wind statue. He turns relieved and nervously laughs. Had Caitlin seen all of his shenanigans? He'd been angry and red-faced with embarrassment under mumbled breath with a little sarcasm. I guess I slayed the cemetery beast, eh, St. Michael? Rubs the dust, bricking off his torn pants and hobbles onto the pyramid. It hasn't been more than two hours in the cemetery, but already the air is chilling for late October. Mist and streaks of liquid diamonds collects on windshields and hoods of car. No activity can be seen on the streets except for the occasional bat or insect flying by the street lights. Mats of silver and gray fog have rolled in, hiding the structures surrounding the cemetery. It continues to extend out its tendrils and wisp as it cascades in. Caitlin, sitting nervously in a locked teal Grand Prix, is worried. Tyler, where the heck are you? She looks on the rolls of the fog now engulf the entire cemetery. There's growing fear as with each ticking hour. Tyler does not reveal himself out of the scary boneyard. Thankfully, there has been no other trouble. That's curious too. No one walking in no activity. It's still a busy time in the city that never sleeps. It's now 10 p.m. and the cemetery and adjacent streets had no activity on a Saturday three blocks from the French Quarter. It was definitely starting to raise alarm in her instincts. Little Tyler, stupid doesn't even get to cut it here. I hope you're okay. Now checks I will own you, Tyler's triumphant. He searches with newfound courage. Tyler takes a moment to savor the last few feet. Cost him blood. Might cost him Caitlin. And most certainly could get him arrested with the damage he did. But it was worth it to win. He puts his phone on top of a crypt. It's the great voodoo queen Marie Laveau's crypt. But Tyler wouldn't know who she is or care. He tears a piece of shirt to bandage his hurt leg. Ties it loosely around the wound and reaches up for his phone. Tyler's phone is not there. What the hell? Tyler's felt all across the top, concerned. Now, having moved the flower pot from an adjacent crib and using it as a stool, he sees that it has totally vanished. Did it fall on the ground? No, it's not there. Did it fall, God forbid, in the crypt? No cracks or openings. Did he put it on another crypt? 
he checked all four around him and no phone which means no Pokemon Go 5 level victory no Boutrexel measles after a half hour of searching Tyler in tears makes the staggered and stumbling walk past Nicolas Cage's pyramid to the north side of St. Louis Cemetery 3. He's a bloody, beaten Pokemon Go soldier now. He's leaving this cemetery angrily. Stupid Baltrexel measles, stupid Pokemon game. Did you say Baltrexel measles? The sky on my phone? A sudden voice above Tyler. And all the quiet makes Tyler Porsche jump and hit a crib wall, then fall clumsily to the ground. My goodness! You look like you've seen a ghost. The voice is covered in darkness. It tendrils of fog above a supine Tyler who's trying to get to his feet. Who who are you? Tyler, a little nervous and jumpy, peers up to see a shadow lying on its side with what looks like a head resting on a Right hand and bent elbow. The voice is male with a distinct French Acadian accent, he thinks. Uh, just an admirer of stupidity, that's all. You know, you caused quite a calamity in this cemetery tonight. The drift of fog thins a little, and Tyler sees a brief outline of possibly a man, but his clothes look dated. Pirates of the Caribbean dated, that is. Why are you dressed for Halloween? Or a or a haunted history tour. Tyler, now that he's regaining his senses, gets a little bold. I find the outfit quite comfortable. I'm a fan of pirate nostalgia, if you don't mind. The man is becoming a little clearer for Tyler. Tyler sees a man sit up and at this point can make out breeches, leather boots, an emerald or possibly blue cloth shirt and jacket, but he's not sure. But the guy's wearing some hat? You are weird to be in here dressed like this. Do you enjoy scaring people? I wasn't scared, but you could have hurt somebody. Tyler's scolding a shadow in a dark cemetery. Not one of his better moves. I would venture destroying a tomb. Where, um, destroying a tomb is more dangerous, young man. Now... Baltrexel measles. Tell me about this silly creature. The shadow shifts a little and Tyler sees a glint of a ruby ring of immense size on the man's shadow man's right hand. At least it appears the man isn't a thief, but probably crazy. Tyler begins. Well, me and my girlfriend play Pokemon Go. You probably don't know what that is being older. You guessed right, Tyler. I'm quite older. This new age of games, as you call them. Yes, they intrigue my curious mind. Shadow responds back. My games back in the day are now are, are and now are chance. Like bingo or roulette. My granny likes those chance games. She plays some mean Pedro. Tyler interrupts. I bet she'd whip you. More annoyed than the crypt crumbling in his face in this subspecies. Blood waking him up. Anton finds the game slightly more than enough provocation. Baltrex on measles. And now Anton slaps his hands together. Yeah, what about him? Tyler startled by the speed of the slap and the emphasis of Baltrex on by the shadow man. Tyler's rat-like eyes strained, trying to peer where the slap was to get a better view of this strange dude. Anton is toying with the food and knows it. It's one of his less redeeming qualities. But like Tyler, he's learned to savor moments of victory in his cursed obsession. Moments like these when the blood will pull him back in time to Marie after the feed. I'm just thinking I heard a joke about a fella like yourself with a, a name similar. Wouldn't you like to hear it? I like jokes. I just hope it's not too dirty or vulgar. If my girlfriend heard it, 
I'd be done for, sure. I was not thinking back to Caitlin, where she could be. He hadn't really cared before. It's not bad. Besides, we'll never tell. And neither will you, right? Tyler catches a little smile from within the shadow. That can't be right. Oh, he, he must have clicked on his, his own cell phone. Okay, I'm all ears. Which wasn't a lie. Tyler's ears had a distinct size to them. It's a wonder he hadn't heard Anton when he snatched Tyler's phone. Let's begin. A man goes to see a lady of ill repute. Anton begins. What's that? Is it like a secretary except now that they are called administrative assistants to be politically correct? I don't know why either. They should just be a secretary, which reminds me that I need to get my res resume done. You mean resume? Anton is getting more annoyed. No, it's a resume. I needed to get a job at Starbucks. You see, I can't put off, I put the offshore stuff because it doesn't pertain to the coffee serving job. I was supposed to get the resume done two months ago, but I had to find Electro Buzz back then, and now it's about checks and measles. Tyler rambles and rambles and rambles. You won't have to worry about the re resume much longer, or in his case, the resume. Tyler. Anton raises his voice to focus the food. He's wondering if this kid will give him indigestion. Tyler stops talking briefly and with a slight stone stare says, Yeah, what is it? You want to hear the joke? The shadow is lighter. Tyler catches a brief look of the bearded pirate. He's got a really cool phone app to light his face up like that. Where'd you get that cool phone app to get your cell to do that? He's real curious and once again distracted. Tyler, joke? It's not an app. Anton had to cool the rage or he'd waste an easy meal ripping Tyler to pieces. Okay, joke it is. Must be the strange lights in the fog. I heard people walking in the fog can cause static elect. Tyler is in a Man goes to meet a prostitute. You know what that is, right? Say not a word, just nod. Tyler nods in agreement and Anton raises his hand to warn him, warn him quiet. Anyway, he's there to use her services. They come to an accord. He sees the boy confused. An agreement for sex, Tyler. Anton continues to joke, preparing to pounce to tear the boy from ear to ear. He interrupts again. Anyway, he takes his shoes off. And she sees he has twisted toes. The lady asks, what happened to your toes? The man replies, I have a medical dish. It's called tolio, like polio. But it's benign and not contagious. It won't really bother our agreement. She agrees and they continue. Pulls off his trousers. The prostitute notes his shins are red and swollen. What happened to your lower legs? Man not missing a beat. Oh, I got this medical condition. I'm working on my feet called shin splints. It's benign and not contagious. It should not in any way affect our agreement. She nods in agreement. Then she notices purple spots on both of the man's knees. Oh my goodness, what's on your knees? Explain. Well, people get the measles. In my case, I've got a benign case that only affects the knees. It's called measles. It should not affect our agreement. The lady nods and agrees. Tyler can see a stare and laugh by the shadow. Tyler gets his usual nature to remain silent. He's got a Drops his undergarment to private lady without an explanation. Oh no! I see you have another medical condition. And this one may affect our agreement. The man surprised says, What are you talking about? A medical condition affecting our agreement. The woman with a sly smile at his privates in a visual demonstration with her index to the thumb approximately an inch says, It's benign and not contagious. I see you had a bad case of the small cocks, too. Takes Pokemon. Go legend Tyler Poche, boyfriend to Caitlin, and certain dinner for the vampire Anton Valter. A minute to get the punchline. Oh, ha 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 ha. He had small junk in his trunk. Ha 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 ha. 
funny one. What's what's your name? I don't think we introduced ourselves. Anton? Valter? And yours? But Anton already knew. Anton? I'm Tyler Poche. From down the bayou. And he said it with a grin and those beady eyes. I know Chauvin well, Tyler. Anton says nonchalantly. Yeah, Chauvin is quiet. I like to ride around the bayou with my girlfriend driving. Wait, I didn't say I was from Chauvin. How do you know that? Do you know me or something? Tyler usually missed the obvious, like taking advice from a dead man, blues man playing guitar to go into a haunted cemetery for a Pokemon Go character. Didn't miss this. Tyler. 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 You are in a cemetery at well past midnight. You obsess to win a stupid game. You put your girlfriend at grave peril as this was a drug buy and sale area before I started to feed here. Anton jumps down from the crib, not making a noise landing in front of Tyler. The spirit is moving. Again, awes the young boy. Yeah, I know it was stupid breaking that old crib. I should probably pay for it. I'll have to get my daddy or Kaylin to help me. Did you just say before you fed here? Captain obviously finally notes the weird man's words after a brief ramble. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. <laughs> if I wasn't so hungry, I'd make you my version of a Renfield. He grabs Tyler's arm and raises him to his face. What's a Renfield? Ow, that deserts. You're pretty strong for such a skinny dude, though. Did you put me down? Tyler's brought a sincere laugh to the part he hasn't had in a while. <laughs> I truly am sorry, Tyler. I wish I wasn't so hungry. Tyler is laughing with him. And Tyler sees Anton. The Pokemon Go champ sees the vampire fangs. Smells rotted flesh and blood on the decayed clothes and realizes too late the position he's in. Tears are streaming from Tyler's face as Anton brings Tyler's left hand up to his fanged mouth. You aren't a haunted history guy. And you aren't one of those gothic strangers either. Eyes blazing colors of mauve with lightning streaks across the bearded vampire's face. Vampire chews off Tyler's left hand, spurting crimson blood, marrow and sinew into the foggy. No, I'm not. And crunching Tyler's hand to his mouth and drinking spurts of blood from the wrist arteries. Gothic Strangeo. But I am a fan of Pokemon Go now. Caitlin is freezing and cold in the room. She's heard every noise in the night. Caitlin could swear she heard a woman scream. Or was it? It couldn't have been Tyler. Probably just a rat killed by the cat she saw earlier. The cat that kind of looked like her cat, Poofy. Oh, um, she wished she was home in bed with Poofy now. Safe, warm bed with no ghetto cemeteries and crazed boyfriends. By the street light at the north corner of the St. Louis Three Cemetery, she sees the ghost of thick fog swirl, churn, and break. From the mist emerges into the yellow emitting light, the largest bat creature that Caitlin's ever seen. It moves with purpose, slowly flying down the street corner. The bat's body is reptilian, with sparse fur, fur and skin, black as the night ebony. Its eyes are fluorescent, more electrical streak of obsidian people. That and so much. Oh my god! That's all Kayla can say with tears running down her face. The powerful beast with a six foot wingspan drifts down the street towards the car. Tyler! Click. Crack. Phone drops. Onto the roof of the hood. Then onto the quiet street. At the same time, Caitlin hears leathery bat wings flap over her car. Her car shakes with the powerful bats ascent into the night. Caitlin turns on the car, headlights, and dry, sets to drive off with a great haste after she puts her seatbelt on. It's been an hour or so since the bat monstrosity left. It's an eternity regardless, wondering about her life. Time to leave. She's moving the vehicle out of this hellhole. Since it would happen 
To Tyler, troubled her just as much. I have to know. She puts the car in park. Curiosity overcomes her terror. She opens the door quickly and retrieves what looks like Tyler's cell phone. It's covered in blood. Regardless of what happened to Tyler, she sees Tyler Poche's victory and obsession has been satisfied. Valtrex Onizel is front and center captured on the Pokemon Go game. A text pops up on her phone from an unidentified number. Who would text her at this hour? What did the text say? I need to know. The text was brief and to the point. You were lucky tonight. And I'm afraid, dear, Tyler was not. While annoying, but funny, my deep meal did lighten my rather somber mood. Trust that I do believe in closure for lost lovers, so consider him dispatched. Now my warning. Come here again at night, and your luck and my generosity will have run aground. By the way, I think I'm going to enjoy Pokemon Go. I've already gotten a taste for it. Thank you for listening. Have a good night.